Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to cover photophosphorylation and the Calvin cycle. So um, both of them together make up um, photosynthesis, so that's really the important um, thing here, is that photophosphorylation is the light-dependent reactions, whereas the Calvin cycle are light-independent reactions. And um, the, the Calvin cycle is really the part where we're sort of building up the energy stores uh, of a plant using all the energy that we've collected um, from photophosphorylation. So just to give sort of like an outline for photophosphorylation, um, I'll sort of try to draw similar to what I drew uh, before um, with the ETC. So it the photophosphorylation does use another ETC, um, but it is a different ETC than what we saw before. And I'll sort of just um, give an idea of where we are here. So this is the stroma, which is sort of the equivalent of like the matrix that we saw um, in the mitochondria. But this here is the thylakoid membrane. And this is the lumen. So inside, um, inside like the, the thylakoid basically. So the when we saw um, the ETC in the mitochondria, we were really referring to that intermembrane space on the outside of the mitochondria. But it's important to remember here that we're really a lot more internal than we were in the mitochondria. Okay, and then just to give sort of like a rough idea of what we have, then we have our ATP base. Okay. Um, right. Okay. So um, a really big difference that I want to emphasize here is that before when we were looking at the ETC in the mitochondria, our electron sources were our high energy electron carriers, NADH and FADH2. But in this case, our electrons are actually going to be ripped off of a water molecule. So this here is photosystem 2, and I'll label photosystem 1, and it is actually responsible for ripping off the electrons um, off of water. And the other important thing that we want to um, consider here is that we're not, we're not starting with these high energy electron carriers, we're starting with water. And those electrons actually have a pretty low potential energy to begin with. And so photosystem one will actually absorb light and put that, that light energy into energizing the electrons that it pulled from the water molecules. So the electrons are pulled off of water, they enter photosystem one, and then they're being uh, excited by this, this, basically this hit of of light that's coming at them. And so this is something that's really important because, like I said before, we need them to have high energy to be able to um, pump our protons across. So that's something that we did see in the electron transport chain um, for um, for the like in the mitochondria and cellular respiration, but it is important to know here that we are pumping a bunch of these protons across and really all that energy that that we're using to pump these is coming from these electrons that we're now um, exciting. So as these electrons sort of flow through, they're losing a little bit of potential energy here um, as they're pumping protons across. So once they get to photosystem one, another sort of hit of light is coming in, that light is being absorbed by the photosystem, and then that light is being put into exciting them once again. So they go on, and then um, sort of where those electrons end up is really interesting. So we start with NADP+, and the electrons actually go into making NADPH which is very similar to NADH, but um, a key difference between NADH and NADPH is that typically NADPH is used for um, anabolic, so building things up, anabolic reactions. 
so this is something that will be an input for the Calvin cycle or the light independent reactions. And then of course, just like in cellular respiration, we've now built this gradient, um, this really strong electrochemical gradient. And so these protons, again, will find a pathway to go back. And as they do that, they have so much energy um, that they're giving off that they're able to convert um, ADP to ATP. So we do get some energy output as well. Um, but the other thing that I want to mention is that, um, like we saw in cellular respiration, we were pumping protons more outwards. We were pumping protons from the matrix into the intermembrane space, so towards the outside of the mitochondria. Whereas in this case, we're pumping towards the inside. We're pumping from the stroma into the lumen of the thylakoid. So we're, we're really going more inwards into sort of the middle of um, the, the chloroplast. So that's really an important difference. And then also another important difference is this is sort of like um, the electron transport chain in the mitochondria and cellular respiration working in reverse in the sense that before our terminal electron acceptor was oxygen that we were converting to water. But here we're actually ripping the electrons off of water to give us um, um, uh, oxygen. Um, and then at the end, our electrons are ending up on NADP plus to give us NADPH, whereas the electron donors before were, were already reduced NADH and FADH2. So that can be something that is a little bit difficult to wrap our heads around, but um, that's sort of the idea of what's going on here. And just while um, I'm just wrapping this up, I'll also just draw out, um, so this is photophosphorylation. I'll just draw the inputs and outputs. And again, just remember that everything that's high energy, we want uh, to be um, in uh, dashed arrows. And then I'll just sort of put light like that. It's not super crucial, but I think, um, yeah, if you just if you just put it as an input, I don't think that that would be wrong or anything. And then of course our ADP, and we're getting some ATP out, and also NAD plus that is accepting our electrons at the end, and we're getting some NADPH. Okay, great. So we've made all this energy, right? We've got ATP and we've got NADPH. So sort of now we need to know um, where we're going from here because. It's, it's important to remember that uh, generally the ATP that is made in the chloroplast do actually stay in the chloroplast. So it's not really energy that the cell will use. And so the mitochondria inside the plant cells are actually responsible for making the ATP that's used for the entirety of the cell. But what is really important here is now moving on to um, the Calvin cycle where we can we can perform something called carbon fixation. So this is where we're um, basically incorporating um, carbon into organic compounds. And really this is just taking a bunch of CO2 and like smashing electrons into it and using energy to then get um, basically sugar out of it. So there's not really much more than that to it. So I'm just gonna draw the input and output diagram, but really like the idea is we input some CO2, right, our carbon source, we're gonna put in some energy, but just remember that this energy isn't, um, isn't coming from an outside source, it's an energy that is coming from the uh, chloroplast because the Calvin cycle is occurring in the chloroplast. And then also inputting our NADPH, right? For anabolic, we're building things up, so we're gonna use NADPH. And then, of course, we input our carbohydrates, so things like glucose. And there's also some water in here, but that's sort of like a little detail. Um, yeah, but the, the really important thing is that this 
this is the way that a, basically a plant cell can make their own food, right? Plants aren't just about taking in carbon dioxide and giving us O2. They really need their own energy source as well. And so they will actually do cellular respiration. And so these carbohydrates, these glucose molecules that they're making through photosynthesis can be used in the mitochondria to then do cellular respiration, much like we do. So that's a really important um, sort of thing to remember here is that this is not the only thing that's happening. Um, and these sugar molecules will be sort of um, cashed in in a similar way um, with um, that in a similar way that we do. So hopefully that gave a good outline of what's happening in the plant cell and um, some of the details of what's going on. But I think this is like a pretty general overview. So if you understand what I was talking about here, then you should be good for the final.